and we are live what is going on everybody this is episode number 43 of team red talks nintendo and i'm here with my amazing co-host and then we also have a guest tonight so this is oh freak no <laughs> sorry i had this going on in the background and it was making an echo my bad sorry sorry for freaking out that is a great way to start a podcast <laughs> the remix <laughs> So oh, people out here making switch gang diss videos. Oh snap. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that switch gang diss video was hilarious, bro. Oh, I haven't seen it. I'm gonna have to check that out. Freak kiss move. Kofi's yeah. Out. Kofi's the goat so far as far as like diss tracks and stuff. You yeah. can't beat Kofi. Kofi's the goat. Trey's was <laughs> Trey's was alright. I don't like the fact that he was dissing my girl, but you know. Yeah, I don't know what she has to do with anything. Cause she she be trolling him low key, <laughs> she do. But shout outs to Kids Move. That was a dope. Uh, that was a dope little uh, Switch Gang diss. I think it was he was trying to get at Kofi. So I'm waiting for Kofi's think, response. Uh, most of it was okay, but that pedophile stuff was out of line. Yeah, y'all y'all gotta stop it with the pedophile yeah, stuff. It's just wild shit. yeah, cool. it's just video games. Y'all gotta yeah, stop with this pedophile game. stuff. But for the most part, I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, there was a couple of people that were kind of taking it a little serious. And I'm just like, bro, it's not that serious. It's a joke. Calm down. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and introduce my co-host and our guest. So let's go ahead and start with Coupon. We usually don't start with you first. Coupon, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are, where they can find you, and what you've been gaming on. Oh, my God. The struggle is real. I'm tired as hell, fam. But that's okay. <laughs> I'm going to get through this. We're going to do this. Yes. Um, so, yeah, struggling like crazy today. Um, Hopefully, we should be having some streams coming later on down the road. Hopefully, tomorrow, if everybody's servers go online. But, uh, you know, play some Suhu and all that good stuff. But thanks for having me today. And hopefully we have an interesting little show. Got some things to talk about. Let's see what's up. Yes, what's up. So let's go ahead and uh, let Alex introduce himself. Let him know where you can find him and what he's been gaming on. Uh, what is going on, people? Active Sid here. And we're back for another week of Team Red Talks Nintendo. Got a lot of good topics to talk about. And we're going to let you in a little secret. Xbox fanboys, why the Switch is selling, you will find out tonight. <laughs> so let's it's go. It's crazy. That's, that's so crazy. Okay, so we're going to introduce our guest for the night. Shout outs to my homie Keith Norris. And if you guys listen to uh, Level Heads Live and Level Podcast, he is a very, um, very uh, notable voice, makes very good points. Um, so we decided to have him on the podcast tonight and come and chop it up with us. This, this is actually the first time he's been on the podcast. So Keith, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people, let them know what you've been gaming on. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Glad to be here. Uh, very, very appreciative of the uh, invite. And I have still only been gaming on Splatoon. Um, didn't get a chance to play in the uh, Splatfest, but we're going to get into that. But yeah, I'm going to be able to gaming on uh, Splatoon right now. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. So um, as far as me, you guys know, it's your girl, Nia, the video game her. You guys can find me on YouTube, the video game her, Twitter, the video game her, uh, uh, Twitch. Uh, Nia loves Ninty, and I have also been playing a whole lot of Splatoon, and a lot of that is because of Salmon Run. I'm not even gonna lie to you, Salmon Run is so lit. I have I don't really play Turf War like that anymore. And the only reason why I will go out and play Turf War is because like Salmon Run is on a schedule, so it's not always open. So you know, but Salmon Run is lit, y'all. Like yeah, it is so it is lit. I freaking love it. Um, I think it's more fun than the turf mode. Yeah, it's definitely more fun than a turf uh, turf war. But let's go ahead and dip into these topics. So we got a couple of things for you guys tonight. So the first thing we're going to be talking about today is the Splatfest results. So um, if you guys have been living under a rock, um, the Splatfest was this weekend, and it was Team Mayo versus Team Ketchup and... Uh, team Mayo won. <laughs> team Mayo won. I'm a little salty, low key about that because I was Team Ketchup. And you know what? I'm not even like a big ketchup person like that. I just really hate mayo. <laughs> ketchup clowns. 80% of you clowns chose ketchup, but we still beat you. <laughs> oh, shoot. I hate 
mayo so much. It's so, so from my understanding, mayo. apparently a lot of the ketchup people were fighting each other, so we never really got a chance to fight against you guys. But it's cool, you you know. We still won. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> exactly. It, either either way, it doesn't matter. It's like cool. You guys won. Yeah, and you I'm know it's funny. still nasty. It's still funny. nasty shit. <laughs> it is nasty, exactly. And you know it's funny. Like, apparently, like, there were, like, a lot of pro players who were choosing, like, the less popular side to see if they could, like, best basically everybody else. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. It was definitely rigged. Okay. Wow. Wow, you guys sure come up with a lot of excuses. <laughs> I, I haven't played, so I don't care. I didn't lose. I didn't even pick a side. I wasn't playing, so it don't matter. But I'm nasty. salty. I ain't afraid to admit it. Cause I, don't, I, don't think it was, I don't think it was rigged. I, from what I heard that... The, when the mayo versus ketchup played, that's when they counted. But when it was ketchup versus ketchup, it didn't count. Yeah, ketchup versus ketchup doesn't count. Like when you yeah, play against your own teammates, it's, it doesn't count. Which means so why were they out. having so many ketchup versus ketchup then? Like, don't they set that up so that you can play against them? Well, they, they can't just not let those extra ketchup well, I know. not play. Like they have to play against somebody. <laughs> it was the same thing the last time with ice cream and cake. Yeah, it happened. I don't, know. Too. I don't know. It just seems weird, but it's whatever. You know, I guess they'll figure it out. It's whatever. Well, they gotta. They'll take it so seriously, everyone. Like, everyone <laughs> like they keep picking teams that are super one-sided. Mm, that you is true. What? That is true, though, because freaking uh, it, they gotta they do happen. stuff like Lamborghini and Ferrari, something yeah, that something people will actually really be dumb. divided yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, because like I, I don't know, some 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 of these flatfish they have some, the weirdest little topics, and you're just like, like really? Like, we we already know what the very last Splatfest of Splatoon two is going to be. It's going to be Pearl versus Marina. Oh like, my we, god, right. they better we, not. We know that. So it's going to be one sided. That's because what they did with the last one. Marina. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be ninety percent Marina though. They yeah. better yeah. not do that because that is so one sided. Pearl's very gonna have like two, just like Pearl's gonna be a team of just like five pros taking on all the Marina guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Shout outs to the homie Dennis for the host. Um, but let me go ahead and read off these numbers to you guys real quick. So as far as Mayo is concerned, for overall votes, Mayo got twenty seven percent of the votes. Ketchup got seventy three percent of the votes, so it won that round. Um, as far as the solo people on Team Mayo, fifty two percent. Um, one on the uh, mayo side and then 48% one on the ketchup side so mayo won that one and then for as a whole for teams mayo as a team won 50, 51% more times than ketchup which is 49% so you know obviously 2 to 1 mayo won y'all suck because you guys picked freaking pearl she sucks <laughs> <laughs> That's Pearl's people. Ugh, Mayo. I know, and she was so like condescending too about it. it well, like, she's yeah, cool though. We, I like Pearl. We, we, Pearl's we, we, a cool chick. I can handle Pearl. Pearl's I like beast. Pearl. People be hating. I like Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, they do be hating. Pearl's her. got like crazy attitude. She's yeah, awesome. She does. She's she that does. Swag. I love her. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and dip into some newsy things. Uh, did anybody have anything to say about Splatfest before we move on to the news? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm two for two with Splatfest. Oh, get out of here! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm zero for zero. I haven't even played a single one yet. <laughs> I, I'll say this about Splatfest. I hate when they just lock the whole game down, though. Like, I don't want to. Uh, I think you were talking about it earlier. I would have rather play Salmon Run than to play. Uh, Salmon Run was open though Turf during War. the Splatfest. Was it open was during it? the Splatfest? Yeah. Uh, I didn't even touch my Switch, so I don't know. So I'm talking from out the side of my neck. But uh, on, <laughs> yeah, on, this time it was the, actually open for some reason. Okay. Because on the Wii U, it was like everything was locked. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that. everything else gets locked out. Yeah. Weird. See, I didn't get to play because I work on weekends, but I I do remember the schedule saying that uh, Salmon Run was open because I keep up with that schedule. You feel me? I <laughs> keep up with that schedule. Um, so, uh, anything anything else on that before we move on to the news? I guess not. Okay. No, so, let's go ahead and move on to some news now. So, Sever released uh, surprisingly on the Switch today. So, to those of you guys who do not know anything about Severed or the people behind Severed, Severed is made by the people who actually made Guacamelee, which was an amazing yeah. game, um, indie game. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read a little excerpt here. Uh, the touch-based first-person RPG comes to Switch. Following the releases on PlayStation Vita, iOS, 3DS, and Wii U, Drinkbox Studios will release its touch-based first-person RPG severed for Switch via the Nintendo eShop in North American and European territories today for $15. 
the developer announced. Here's an overview of the game via Drinkbox Studios. In Severed, take control of a one-armed heroine wielding a living sword as she knits together pieces of her story from both the past and the future. Explore a surreal, non-linear world using a touch-based combat mechanic to defeat enemies in its first-person RPG. Progress in abilities, discover secrets of the land, and grow as you master both the art of attack and defense techniques. Let Severed be your mystery to unravel. So, um... Aside from the whole Severed thing being on the Switch today and it kind of being a surprise release, there's also a lot of people who are kind of upset because it is handheld only. I'm going to let Alex take the reins because I know Alex did have issues with that. So, Alex, why don't you go ahead and talk about this? Yeah, it's it's heresy. This game... (laughs) This game defies the purpose of the Switch. The whole advantage of the switch is you can be at home play your game on your tv then your your kid or your dog wants to go outside and you're like oh fuck it fine i'll take you and then you take your switch with you and you keep playing your game but this game doesn't allow you to do that it's like they should have kept this shit on the 3ds like i don't like i don't want to say things like the switch should get less games but like this kind of game defeats the purpose of the switch i just don't understand why they do stuff like oh shit i closed my obvious uh i don't understand why they do stuff like this because like you're you're killing the main selling point of your console with games like this apparently there's a few other ones that are handheld only i've I've never heard of the second one there's another one first one it's like Uh, a rhythm game it's the first one to be handheld only severed is the second one like that shit's crazy and i i get it this game is a touch screen based game it was on the wii u the 3ds and the vita and yeah. you, use, you, you use touch screen to make cuts on the screen but if that's the case why are you putting on a device that can't do it in all of its modes like i don't you're segregating the people who are playing this console because not everyone plays the switch on the go yeah so, like, I don't see why they put games like this on the console. Like, they could have put Guacamelee instead. Yeah. Yeah. I totally would have doubled it for Guacamelee. Yeah. That's so cool. I would have been the third time I bought Guacamelee. Yeah. I don't, I don't think games like this should be on the Switch. It's confusing. They don't market it properly. They don't tell you specifically that this is handheld only, unless yeah. you really look unless into it. Unless you really look at the eShop. Because, you know, in the eShop, yeah. it shows you the control methods for each game. So, like, exactly. unless you're really, really looking and paying attention to that information... Like most people you know, aren't going to notice because they don't yeah. care enough to check for shit like that. Like, you're going to confuse people. You're going to make people second-guess buying games. It shouldn't be like this. Any game that you can play on the go, you should be able to play docked. Yeah. That's just what it is. That's the specialty of this console, and you're not playing to its strengths. Like, right. no, sorry, it shouldn't be here then. Right. Keith and uh, Coupon, do you guys have anything to add to what Alex has said, or do you have a counterpoint? I do have a counter. I, I mean, I understand what Alex is saying, but I mean, it's to be expected. This thing is a hybrid. It is a game console that you can take on the go. These type of games fit perfectly with it. Uh, it is, like you said earlier, uh, you don't want to see less games, but it is optional. You don't have to buy this game. This game is specific for that mode. Yeah. Uh, me personally, I don't like touching my screen. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna buy this game, and I don't want to play it in handheld mode. But I see why they put it on there. Uh, yeah. I doubt it's gonna sell a lot, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I. I, I oh, go ahead, coupon. Oh, I was just gonna say, like, yeah, I kind of see the. I see what uh, Alex is saying, and you make a lot of sense with that too, Keith. But like. Um, I'm just of the mind that the Switch has various different game modes, you know, diff- different modes of uh, play, and it should be utilized in all different modes and, and not alienated to just one. So, um, yeah, the whole it just being handheld only and then people who might want to do just, you know, want to play in, with their controllers or something like that or dock mode or something mm-hmm. kind of alienates them. So um, hopefully we don't get too many more games like that. Or if there is games like that, maybe they can implement another way of, a form of play because remember it is a hybrid and you got to play to all of its you know strengths and stuff so yeah. I mean, other than that i mean i didn't plan on getting it i really don't yeah. like, see now it's, I mean, again, it's, interesting, but it's pretty clear why just... nintendo themselves didn't market this game yeah, yeah. and why it wasn't at e3 it wasn't in any of their sizzle reels and it just yeah. kind of was like oh here's our game and it is kind of some piss poor way of like the way it just kind of appeared like surprise motherfucker like wait what <laughs> like 
So uh, hopefully they don't do this too too much often, and hopefully they don't get too many games where it's just one particular mode. Because like if if this is gonna yeah. become a regular thing, like Nintendo needs to make a specific section of the eShop for the Switch that says handheld says handheld only. only. Games. Yeah, that I totally would be good. Agree with that. I could work with that. At least yeah, make it clear so people understand what they're getting into, because the way right. things handled now is not okay. Yeah, yeah. Because somebody might purchase it thinking, "Oh, this is a cool game," and then exactly. they find out it's only handheld mode, and then they're gonna be mad, and you can't get any refunds or anything of that nature. Yeah. Which I think you're, also you're, Nintendo should implement you're some more kind likely of... to raise the dead than get a refund. From yeah, Nintendo. yeah, yeah. Big, big time. I doubt it would ever happen, but it would be nice if they gave you like at least an hour's grace period of refunds for eShops. But you know, yeah. that's never happening. Hell, Microsoft fucking does it now. I yeah. mean, <laughs> they give you a two-hour grace period if you want a refund. Yeah. They should get it. There should be something like that implemented, especially with like the way things are going to be going with the Switch and stuff, especially for stuff like this. And if yeah. they're not going to have a separate area for like handheld only, at least give people, you know, who might make a mistake of purchasing a game, find out it's only handheld. Because exactly. I didn't even know Voice was only handheld. I didn't even, ch- I didn't even check that. I've I was never even that heard game. of that game before. I, I knew about the game, but I don't totally didn't know it was just handheld. I knew it was on the um, iOS and stuff, but. Now that I know, I'm not getting on Switch because it's kind of pointless. Yeah. yeah I, 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 agree. I agree to that, though. Yeah. So. I'm in agreement with pretty much what everybody said here. Like, I, I, however, am not opposed to handheld-only games because I feel like if there's a game that fits for the Switch, mm-hmm. it should be there, whether it's handheld-only or whether it only works optimally on dogs mode because, I mean, there's just certain games that are better. Just to make it obvious. But, <laughs> but I agree with you guys. When yeah. you say make it obvious, like Nintendo, if if there's gonna be an influx, and it's only the second one, so I, I can't even right. say it's an influx. But if there is a time where there's an influx, where there's a lot of mobile games coming on over, and they're handheld only, um, Nintendo should definitely make a specific uh part of the eShop so that people understand. This is handheld only because here's the thing that we've been saying for a long time on Team Red when it comes down to the switches. Like, yes, we understand that the Nintendo Switch is a handheld console hybrid um but we also have to remember that it is also a handheld and there's a lot of people that like to play on handheld there's a lot of people that like to play on mobile and not everybody is us there are some people out there that don't mind playing games on a touch screen that would like to you know have some games like um severed even if there's if it's not to our taste you feel me like they're not getting a sell for me I don't want to play this game on a touch screen, but there's right. somebody out there that has that no problem at all playing this on a touch screen. And those people should be able to have access to those games. I'm not going to say don't put them on the eShop if it doesn't utilize both assets of the Switch. You know, right. so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, as far as it being touch screen only, I understand that you have to, you know, you, there ha- you have to be very precise with the cuts and the cutting off like the different parts of the creatures and stuff like that. I feel that if they really wanted this to work, there is a way they could have done that. Because one thing, a lot of people try to forget exists, but it does exist. And I actually don't mind that it exists. Is gyro and motion controls. If they yeah, really you can wanted just to use the this, gyro controls. Yeah, yeah. Like if they really, really wanted to get this to work in both dock mode and in handheld mode, I would not be opposed to playing this game with the gyro and slicing with the gyro controls. Maybe yeah, add like, like a cursor or something. So it it would be pretty game. similar to swiping. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be yeah. that. Like it wouldn't be as accurate, I guess. But it's not going to be so bad that you can't play that game. Yeah. But see, my only thing with the with touch with the touch screen, like using the touch screen and stuff, is that we don't have. Uh, the um stylus type of deal yeah. anymore. Like they don't utilize stylus control, so it yeah. makes it less. You know, you gotta use your fingers and stuff, and they ain't nobody right. trying to be sitting up there swiping with their fingers like <laughs> like they would on the phone. Like uh, mm. maybe if they allow us to have styluses to use with these things, I don't know if you can at I mean, all because I've tried. Ones that mimic like but, your hand touch that you can. Use. Yeah, so like I don't know, maybe they'll come out with you know switch styluses or something. Yeah. You could actually use those and make some of these games a little bit more precise and stuff if they're gonna go handheld mode only or touchscreen yeah. mode only, but. Uh, overall, they really should have a separate section. They use their touch, touch screen, handheld only, you know, games, so that way people know immediately, and there's no confusion. And people who want just handheld mode, you know, touch screen games, they can go yeah. for that. But overall, I do believe that there should be options for both sides. Yeah. If Drinkbox were smart, though, they would do the gyro thing and let people. Yeah, yeah. like why not? I just don't. I don't get like 
it obviously would take a little more work for them, but yeah. like you have a system that yeah. can cater to two markets. Like, why yeah. not take advantage of it? Because that would definitely, definitely. Increase, that would increase the chance. You're increase your sales too. Yeah. If people exactly. Because now I have zero interest in buying this game. Yep. <laughs> Whereas I if, if I could play it on game. the on the TV, I would yeah. have at least gave it a shot. Right, and the, and the crazy part is, you know, it's a good game because they made an amazing game out of Guacamelee. And yeah, Guacamelee kicks ass. Yeah, so, so it's like, oh, cool, it's from those guys. I want to try out their other game. Oh, it's only handheld only. Yeah. There's only touch uh, touch controls. Damn. Well, I can't buy it because I'm not into those type of games. Right. But if they right. have the option of, you know, both sides, be like, oh, okay, I could use gyro controls or I could use my. Uh, you know, a pro controller or something. Yeah, there like you the go. only time I'm going to be swiping on my Switch screen is when they finally give us a damn web browser. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move on to our next news topic. We're going to be talking about a game by the name of Gear.Club Unlimited. So this game was announced last week. Sometimes it was unveiled to be coming to the Nintendo Switch this year. So... Forza for Switch. This, <laughs> I'm reading this right now from Nintendo Life and uh, just kind of give you guys a little excerpt, a little backstory. Uh, it says, in early June, publisher Mike uh, Microids outlined six games that it has in development for the Nintendo Switch, one of which was listed as Gear.Club, developed by Eden Games, the original with the name... Eh, I, I'm, I'm talking too fast. Developed by <laughs> Eden Games... The original with that name on mobile is free to download, utilizing ads and in-app in -app purchases to make money. Still due in Q4 this year, what we'll get on the Nintendo Switch is actually Gear.Club Unlimited. The name certainly suggests that it'll be a, a, re a release loaded with content, including branded cars and plenty of races and tracks. Microids mm. has also given us an early look at the teaser trailer which is primarily cinematic. You can see that below with some official details and a couple of glamour shots. So um, this isn't the first mobile game that we've had coming to Switch of this caliber. Of course, you know, we've Ocean. had some... Yeah, we've had some other mobile games, but like of this caliber where, you know, there's mobile games out there that actually try to be a little bit more serious, a little bit more stylized. Um, the first, like Alex mentioned, was Implosion. And now we're going to be getting Gear.Club Unlimited, which is like a racing simulator type of game on the style of maybe like a Forza Motorsport. I don't think it's a sim. It's probably more like an arcade type of game. Yeah, it um, seems that way. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really interesting game. Is anybody here interested in this particularly? Absolutely. So Keith, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you feel about this news? Well, um, if you are, if you listen to the Live and Level podcast, we kind of talked about this uh, over there, yeah. and we were we were also chiming in with other mobile games that could uh, fill those voids that the Switch right. doesn't have. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm very interested in this game because I want to see if they're going to one update the visuals and how it's going to perform on the Switch, yeah. and uh, how Nintendo fans are going to react <laughs> to this type of game. Um, right. I was once they announced this, I started looking up the I think it's called. Uh, uh, Gear Club something on the uh, iOS and I was mm -hmm. looking it up trying to see the reviews and things like that and people were comparing it to uh, Forza. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a very good thing and I, it, it definitely fills that gap instead of Nintendo fans waiting on the next, what was that game that got canceled? Project, on the Project Cars. Project Cars. <laughs> so instead of waiting on Project Cars too, you know what I'm saying? You can just play this yeah. and don't, don't you know, just knock it just because it's a mobile game. Actually give it a shot, you know? Yeah. And the interesting thing that I've noticed too is a lot of a lot of people knock mobile games, but in this day and age, mobile games are really trying to come on the come up. Like there's a lot of mobile games out here that are trying to be on the caliber of a console game. Um, Implosion is definitely one of those games that tries to kind of reach for that. Uh, I guess try to reach for that benchmark, so to speak. Um, and even though um, some of these games are kind of, um, I guess they're kind of simplistic. There you go because of the uh, because of the control scheme, because of the control scheme there you go thank you. you are reading my mind today because <laughs> of the control scheme that you normally would find on uh you know cell phones but um i could really see them becoming a little bit more complicated um as this kind of stuff kind of evolves 
Um, I'm really looking forward to see what Gear Club does. I hope that it is an actual uh, racing game that could kind of fill the gap from like a Project Cars or, you know, some of these other racing games out here. Anybody else want to talk about this before we move on? Uh, yeah. Um, my, my view is a little different than your guys, I guess. I didn't buy the Switch to play cell phone games. I feel you. Um... It's cool that they're getting these games. I like Implosion. I think Implosion's a good game. But it comes down to price point. As mm -hmm. long as they keep these games under $20 and all the content is unlocked, I think that's totally cool. Right. But if they try to pass off cell phone games as $60 full retail games to compete with stuff like Forza, that's yeah. a problem. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing any $60, like, mobile not. sports. Not yet, anyways. But, like, yeah. uh, that, that, as long as it's, like, if they stay within reason, that's totally cool. It's an option. Like, it's right. better than no racing game, of course. Yeah. Uh, the game actually does look pretty good. Uh, we'll see graphically what they do with it, because, obviously, the Switch uh, can do more than most cell phones, so it should be getting some sort of resolution boost or graphic yeah. boost. Uh, but yeah. it's cool, cool to see. I just don't want to see the Switch get flooded with cell phone games. Like, yeah. I, I get it. You guys want to see them fill gaps with cell phone games. But, yeah. again, a lot of people didn't buy this console for cell phone games. They could have bought what? a cell phone. I, I understand that. But at the same time, you can kind of say the same thing about indie games. You know, like, there's a lot of indie games out here that are really, really good games. And a lot of them are even, like, competing for... Um, like high and high reviews is on the same style of like these but AAA games. I the would only, prefer the only indie difference games over, the, over cell The only difference though is indie games aren't on cell phones. Yeah, it, it depends. Not all of them. Not all of them though. There are some, but that are just a few. There are some, but cell they're phones. not like they're not like, like a big influx of them like they are with iOS games. But yeah, but overall, overall, I'm just yeah. saying like this console is more than capable of playing full on games, not yeah. just cell phone games. No, and, I agree. Uh, I agree. I agree my, with you. I my thing you. with the whole thing is like, okay, this is how I'm looking at it. It's like, I, I, I like the fact that we do get some pretty obscure games. It's okay if we get a few of the, you know, cell phone games, but I don't want the switch to become the cell phone, you know, box. Yeah. I don't I don't want right. it to be, you know, I don't want it to be known for, oh, well, you guys just get indies and cell phone games and ever and a sprinkle of, you know, uh exclusives Nintendo from Nintendo yeah. and yeah. then maybe a couple of third parties here. I want, you know, I want the game this want to actually Autos. flourish from that. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't mind some cell phone games. Sure, if there's some good ones out there and they stay within reasonable price, like Alex said, yeah. perfect, but I, I didn't buy this for cell phone games, like he said. Yeah. At that all. is the last thing like, on my mind. That is the last thing on my mind. Yeah. Uh, indie, I'll buy indies over cell phone games all day. Because like 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 we said, you know, indie games, you're not gonna find as many of them on cell phones as you would, you know, the other way around. So yeah. I would prefer okay, like, the main thing is price point. The, yeah, as long price as they point stay is within really reason, good. then it's totally cool. Yeah. I agree. Like, I yeah, agree. Definitely. I, I, I definitely agree, agree but I, I do think that sometimes people do um, underestimate some of these cell phone games because there's a lot of some of them are good out there that are actually trying a lot. To a lot of cell phone them. games are only bad because of the touchscreen. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I'm trying to go with that. Like, there's a lot of developers out here that are trying to actually like push the envelope. If they utilize them. more of the yeah, switch's like, capabilities with their game, then yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, like I know I always sound negative. I mean, like it's totally cool if they bring their games over as long as they take advantage of the hardware, yeah. use right. the proper button layout keep the price in check, and make sure we're getting all the content. Yeah. Like, if they're doing all those shit, if they check all the boxes, yeah. no that's problem. totally cool. But, like, uh, if that's what we're getting instead of major third-party games, yeah. that's still not okay. Yeah, I agree. I definitely yeah. agree with you there. I, I agree. I, I agree to that. Yeah. Def definitely about the price point. But see, what Mohammed uh, Alavi said in the, in the comment, I'll, I'm sorry if I butcher your last name. He said <laughs> it needs more third-party than mobile games. Yeah, see, that's, yeah that's totally. Thing, like, but the thing is, if you're going to continue to wait and be mad when these games don't come and you're passing up all these other games that are coming, like these mobile games, like uh, I'll just give you an example. There's a game called Modern Combat. It's basically yeah, the Call, Call of Duty, Duty knockoff. It's yeah. basically, basically a knockoff Call of Duty. If yeah. that game was to come over to the Switch with this online multiplayer, it, it would definitely fill that void. And you're right. The price has to be right. It has to be at least. It has to be priced accordingly. Yeah. Right. And I definitely agree to that. Yeah. But 
Dude, I would I would definitely check that game out instead of trying to wait every year. Is Call right. of Duty coming this year? Is yeah. Battlefield coming this year? Like I don't have time for that. Like just go ahead and give me a game. Oh <laughs> yeah, well I ain't waiting for those games. <laughs> like <laughs> my, my thing is I'm not waiting for things. It would be nice if they come over, but I'm not holding my breath for everything. And I'm going yeah. to try all these other obscure games, even if they are you know iOS games that came over. But like Alex yeah. said, if they're within reasonable price, they utilize the full capability of the Switch. We're not getting ganked, and they're giving us all the all the uh you know yeah. DLC yeah. whatever else is on there and content. Yeah. I'm cool with them. I'm okay with trying them out. But like right. I said, I didn't buy the. None of us picked up a Switch to buy any iOS games. Period. Sure. That was not in the forefront of our minds at all. Yeah. I didn't stand in the lines. Yeah. Nobody pre-ordered no Switches, thinking I'm gonna get the new uh you know. Uh, uh, iOS game from so and so such and such. Yo. Yeah, like nobody was thinking that, and that's the only that's where yeah. I'm coming from. No one was thinking that, but if they come over, they're within reason. Like we said, it's cool. We'll try yeah. them out. All all of us will try them out. We know yeah, that. Yeah, like yeah. this like, 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 time, we will try. It. Implosion's a good game. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they they checked all the boxes. The price right. is under twenty dollars. Yeah. They they made the graphics a little better. All the content's unlocked. Yeah. And, like and it, it actually did pretty it's a good. Hack and slash game. It's a good yeah. game. Yeah. And it did yeah. good. And it's under twenty dollars, so it yeah, like that's good. that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. as they check all the boxes, then it's totally cool. But like, yeah. we're we're seeing microtransactions in full price AAA games now. That's what I'm worried about. These cell phone games, right? Yeah, they they, they are already so because they're to usually that, free right? to play like, on iOS for the yeah. most part. Yeah. And you with the microtransactions included. So if they come over to the Switch, we have to play us. Uh, we have to pay a short uh, emissions fee, uh, and then the you know. Stuff on top of that and the microtransactions, so it's like, eh, yeah. I know where y'all are coming from with that. That's just where I'm coming from. But overall, I mean, as long as they yeah, check that, the boxes, I'm cool with trying game. them out. Oh, well, that racing game looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it does look good though. So well, that, that was just a trailer, wasn't it? Like, was that yeah, in-game? Yeah, that's, a, that's that like a, a CGI trailer. A CGI though. Okay, so I yeah. mean, that's a nice but little I CGI trailer. Seen, yeah, I've seen some <laughs> gameplay from the iOS version, and it's yeah, like, it's a pretty nice looking game. Like, it's not amazing but it's a nice yeah game but this is good for people who are into racing games and yeah. need something to tie them over until maybe we see some type of bigger game right yeah. but i mean it's definitely worth the shot checking it out and yeah. stuff i'm just not a racer type so i probably will be passing yeah, on the it switch but doesn't have there. simulation racers they got yeah like, at all so yeah, fast somebody can make a good Mario money Kart, off this. and yeah. i think there's another there's like the switch has out. a lot of areas that right. pe- wipe out, that not wipe out uh red yeah out, red out yeah all right, so let's go ahead and move on from that. That was a good little discussion. So we have another game that's going to be coming to the Switch later this year. And this is a game that's already been on uh, uh, the other consoles as well as PC. And it is a game called Brawl Out. And if you guys have never heard of this game before, oh my God, really? it is like Smash <laughs> Brothers. Yeah, it has Smash. Indie, yeah, but it has any characters. Um, I well, I think a lot of them are just for the game, but there's also a cameo from the dude from. Um, they actually like, have Ori like, in here. Like Are there they other just, like Ori indie guys in yeah, there? Yeah, Ori was in Ori here. I think they released too? Ori. Oh, I think. Nice. Ori's in this game. I'm confident. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I gotta check. I mean, it might be a different game I was thinking of, but because like, they, they, they had they need a... to add uh, Shovel Knight, Shantae, and Wan yeah, Wakamele yes, into this shit. Yes, they really do. They this looks do. cute though. It's these cute. these <laughs> other characters in the background, they look like they're fucking knockoff Skylanders. Right. I was like, is it Skylanders brawler? I like it aesthetically though. I do like the yeah the, yeah the, the yeah. art style is good i saw some gameplay it looks even faster than smash yeah, yeah this looks interesting it's not too bad i mean you know yeah. if you're not if you until smash comes over smash you can get this because we know smash is coming over this so. will be a good way to tie people over till smash yeah until right. smash gets Wait, here is it coming yeah. over well, I'm, I'm, they would be stupid if they don't bring it over. They'd be no, smash, smash is coming. Come on. Smash is coming. Like I'm not even worried about it. It ain't coming this year though, because we got so many stuff Probably coming in. We'll we'll hear about it next year. This game is so similar to come out. This could be Nintendo saying, "Hey, we don't have Smash coming in the pipeline." I doubt from. it. No, they're bringing Aww. Smash. Did that, so. that, that, Nintendo yeah. ain't gonna. N- Nintendo's bringing this over because they know they don't have Smash. Well, right like now. if if that was the that's case, it. they wouldn't let Rhyme come over because that's pretty right. much Zelda. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, these are just fillers until they Zelda can get their game. bigger, uh, their big game ready because Smash is coming. That is a missed like, opportunity. N- Nintendo's not dumb. Part. Like people will play this till Smash. Then once Smash comes, they'll drop this like a sack of potatoes. Exactly. Right. 
And you're gonna get those. And that's and that's those not people. trying to make offense to this game. I'm just it's saying. It's not. Like, it's just that's like what's that's gonna happen. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. So let's go it. ahead and read a small excerpt from this article here from Nintendo Everything. It yeah. says that Brawl Out is heading to Switch. I like the name. On the European, <laughs> a European um, Switch eShop reveals a release is planned for late 2017. Brawl Out is a party fighting game that debuted on Steam earlier this year. It's designed for couch play, uh, online ranked matches, and competitive tournaments. We have plenty of details about Brawl Out in the overview below. A trailer for the game is also attached to the break. Um, I don't want to go through all of this stuff. Just know it's like Smash <laughs> with <laughs> indie characters. It looks pretty fun. I like the way that it looks aesthetically, and I think that we've pretty much uh, <laughs> and uh, if you want it on Steam, it's actually fifty percent off right now. Yeah, it's fifty percent mm-hmm. off right now on Steam. I think this game came out in April. And uh, I, yeah, it shows April twentieth. Yeah. I think I also read somewhere that Brawl Out is coming to the Switch in November. Y'all can let me know if that's bogus or not, because yes. I don't want to mislead people. But I thought that I, I, I saw that it was supposed to be coming in November. Anything in the window of Mario Odyssey is DOA. Yeah, <laughs> so they probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, Mario is in October, so they're they're good if they come out in. Yeah, November. well, that game is gonna yeah. take a long time to beat, though. Yeah. But whatever, we'll see. I hope this game does well. Yeah. I, I'll say I'll say this about Brawl Out though. Mm-hmm. The one thing that they got over Nintendo is that they don't have the restrictions that Nintendo has with when it comes for to their Smash. online. They yeah. can do whatever it is they want to do with this game that Nintendo wants to do, but you know they put themselves in that box. I yeah. guess you can right. Say. Yeah. So that's one thing that they could take advantage of and say, hey, we don't have those restrictions. We can put finishers in our game, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. And it might have better online. <laughs> oh, I pretty much can promise you it will. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I bet I, I bet you'll that? be able to like invite your friends to this game too. Oh and maybe, yeah. my god, maybe my god, you can even talk to them. Oh I guarantee you it won't be as laggy as Smash Brothers. I guarantee oh, you. Oh damn. No. Smash Brothers is the worst game to play online. Like, I love Smash yeah. Brothers, but playing online but, is a pain. I really hope they sort that out for the new one. I, I doubt it. Too. I hope so, too. It just seems like we're, we're still on the uh, Like, Wii Smash servers. is so good locally, but, like, when you play it online, it's so bad. Yeah. yeah. Even we're, like still st- we're still stuck on Wii U servers right now, and I'm Probably. sorry, I'm not paying for that. Yeah, this game looks pretty good. <laughs> I just Alex, watched the Alex be on, Ninte- be on Nintendo's freaking Twitter all day. Every day. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna block him soon. They're gonna block my ass eventually. <laughs> they're still gonna block you, man. That's this is hilarious. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on from Brawl Out. But before we move on to our next topic, I'm gonna go ahead and give some shout outs in the chat. Shout outs to the 29 people watching right now. We got the homie Quake up in here. Muhammad Alavi's up in here. Terrence C is up in here. Got the homie Unforgiven up in here. EJ Johnson is up in here. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for uh, coming to the podcast and participating in the conversation with us. Make sure you go ahead and give this a thumbs up. Give it a like because that really helps the podcast out. It helps get uh, people over here to watch and, you know, it, it helps get it on the front page. So go ahead and do that. Help us out, man. Help us out. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next newsy topic, and it is about uh, Metroid. So Samus Edition new Nintendo 3DS XL is going to be arriving in stores on the 15th of uh, September, which is the same day that Metroid Returns comes out. But um, it doesn't come with the game, though, right? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Mm, they, do, they do a lot of those special editions that don't actually come don't with Don't have the game, game right. Yeah. I think, didn't they do that with Monster Hunter? Monster Hunter was like that, yeah. I think some of the Pokemon ones are like that, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's coming with the game or not, but it is a special edition. It's a good looking 3DS, 3DS I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I don't really like orange, but this looks nice. It looks good. So here's some pictures of what it looks like. This is what the uh, top of the clip Nope, it doesn't include like. it. Uh, this is a couple of details in the uh, uh, the art. And then there's also some things on the back as well. That actually looks really nice. Yeah. So it doesn't come with the game, by the way. I just yeah, I figured as much. Yeah. That's what I thought. I don't understand why they do that. Why don't I don't they know why they do that. They should just the throw game. the game in there. Yeah, like, what the heck? The money. They yeah, trying to get all of the money. Because they know you're going to buy the game full price anyways. <laughs> right? 
I mean, yeah. they're not wrong. They're like, yeah, they're they're not wrong. Yeah. They're not they're wrong. They're like, let's get this shit out here because these fools about that out, out here. The box looks it. good oh. too. Monster Hunter, the Monster Hunter 3DS did come with the game digitally. It was Majora's Mask. It was Majora's um, Mask that didn't come with yeah. Oh, I see. Thank yeah. you guys for correcting That's even situation. more weird, because that's a Nintendo first party one. Yeah, hmm. it's weird, it's weird. Um, also, uh, there were some other things that came up as far as uh, Metroid is concerned. Remember how last week we talked about how uh, this was going to have Amiibo locked content where there's, there's some um, interesting <laughs> reasons as to what they said about this controversy so let me go ahead and uh read this this is from usgamers.net and uh it goes at a preview event for metroid summer's returns nintendo finally de- finally clarified amiibo support for the game especially with regards to how hard mode will work in the game as it turns out, this probably was a case where better communication could have cleared up the whole situation. Here's the lowdown on what Nintendo told US Gamer when I asked Nintendo representatives at a preview event if hard mode was like behind Amiibo, they were clear to make the distinction. Fusion mode, they corrected me. Yes, fusion mode, which will give players access to Samus's fusion suit, as well as a more challenging difficulty in the game is indeed locked behind the Metroid Amiibo. This content will not be offered as a separate DLC in Nintendo's dig- digital eShop. So Fusion Mode would not be accessible in the digital eShop as DLC. Wow. However, there will be a standard hard mode that will be unlocked once players complete, complete the game on regular difficulty. This mode, which is confusingly separate from the Fusion Mode's harder difficulty, is said to be harder than the standard difficulty, but not as hard as that found in Fusion Mode. So Hard, <laughs> so hard Mode is still stuck behind a freaking Amiibo, mode, basically. Hard Mode is still... That's crazy. Well, Fusion Mode is still locked Look, behind hard Fusion Mode. mode. What they so, mean is, like, Nightmare Mode. Oh, right. snap. So, so you got right, standard wait, mode, wait, hard wait, mode, wait, and wait, wait. fusion, which is nightmare. Let's not talk over each other. Let's start with Keith. Tell uh, us I how was... you feel about this news. <laughs> well, I was just going to say they took that wording from Microsoft E3 conference. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Pretty much. Um, man, I don't know. Nintendo with this. I never like, um, what you call it? Amiibos. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really have too much to say about this. I just, that's retarded. It's just retarded, Nintendo. Come on, guys. Yeah. Trying to play us. All right, coupon. What do you have to say about this? <laughs> they trying to. They trying to play. See, I. I'm not. A, I'm not a Metroid fan, so it's not going to affect me. But it's still stupid, and I really hope people don't fall for this. But they are. Um, most people are going to buy the amiibo because they want it as a collection, which is fine by me, fine by everybody, cool. But that's not cool for people who really want to have those hard mode, or I should say, probably like lethal mode or something. So you got your, you got your normal mode, you got your hard mode, and then you got expert mode and expert mode which is fusion mode held behind an amiibo which you can't get unless you get the amiibo and you know those amiibo are going to go off the shelves quickly they're already That's sold crazy. out yeah and you might not ever seen and i'm pretty sure they're not going to have a long they're, they're probably not going to have they them around still for a haven't while. even restocked the 30th anniversary zelda ones yet oh my goodness so so yeah. like you're never getting these right so you, you won't be able to get that right? mode <laughs> how do you feel about this alex how do you feel I, I feel the same way as before. In fact, it's even more insulting now yeah. <laughs> that they specified, oh, there's still a hard mode, but if you get this toy, you get an even harder mode. Like, that shit is crazy to me. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why people are okay with this. Like, my favorite Nintendo shills aren't talking about it. <laughs> they won't talk about it. Uh, I just don't get it. Like, they'll, they all want to shit on DLC and microtransactions and stuff, which I agree with. You should shit on microtransactions and games. But at the same time, you can't shit on that and then be okay with this. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't know. Like, like we were talking about last week, this was always one of my greatest fears with Amiibo. It wasn't the fact that they were collectibles. It was the fact of how they could be misused in regards to uh, locked content. And... um with this it seems like it's being realized and um i I really hope that they reconsider and they find a way to make it uh accessible through maybe beating the game or you have to do some you know some things to unlock it somehow but 
I'm not really a fan of Amiibo Lark content. You know, I'm okay with like small things like we talked about last week, like maybe skins, skins and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's like some upgrades or whatever. It's not an online game. So small it's not things, a big deal yeah. With upgrades as right. you know, an incentive, but like to have whole modes, I'm not okay with that. And it's like Nintendo is is one of the companies that's they're getting into it now. You know, they did it and, with and the it, Zelda. And DLC. again, like like we were talking about last week, the people who are buying the amiibo most likely are never going to scan it to yeah, especially not to play a hard mode they just want to keep it in the box for the most part and the people who want to play the hardest mode they want that fusion mode probably don't want to buy a toy to do that yeah yeah i'm sure like i'm sure there's a bunch that do want to have yeah. all of that but i bet you there's a lot of people who just, just want to unlock the hard mode. mode or they just want the hard mode yeah. the yeah. real hard mode not the yeah. intermediate mode yeah. Intermediate mode. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Nintendo's getting into it. You know, they did it with the it's a little, Zelda. It's a little too much. It's a little yeah. too much. They did it with the Zelda thing. They didn't lock it behind the amiibo, but you do have to get that DLC if you want that extra hard mode. So you know, the master mode or whatever. Yeah, they're, they're getting into but it. But I would have, I would have preferred them to do it that way for this too. At the very least, you're buying DLC that isn't locked behind a toy. Well, again, it isn't like, going to uh, be thirty-two dollars. Like, like we said before, with that Zelda DLC. Kinda, you're getting the other stuff seasons with it. of hero yeah, or whatever the, the hell it's called it. like yeah. the actual new story mode it's all tied together so that's a yeah. little different this one you're literally just unlocking a hard mode yeah, yeah. so it's like i don't know maybe that's maybe that's too much they went a little too far this time or maybe what they could do for people who do not want the amiibo make it a dollar in the eShop no, and let people work. Not, it, you shouldn't though. even have to pay for it, to be honest, at all. It's a hard but, mode. <laughs> I know, I know, but I'm just saying, but, I mean, if it's going to be locked behind an Amiibo, for the people who don't want the Amiibo, just give it to them for, like, I don't know, 99 freaking cent in the eShop or something. I don't and, like, you probably can't even find the Amiibo. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to be able to find this Amiibo. Like, if you haven't already pre-ordered it, which is sold out from what you said, then you're not going to find it anywhere. And if they restock it, which I doubt is going to happen anytime soon, you're SOL. So, you don't Zelda get the hard get, so like, let me ask Zelda y'all, doesn't get restocked, love, Metroid which sure as hell isn't getting So restocked. let me ask y'all this then. Is it more okay to lock things behind the paywall that's just straight up pay? Or is no. it worse to lock it behind an Amiibo? Because it sounds they're, like what y'all are saying. They're both bad. It sounds like what y'all are saying is it's worse to have. No, they're both content. bad, but I'm saying because. Of course, it's the Amiibo's worse. They're, 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 it costs more and they're hard to find. Yeah, it's but, like it's bad but, on both ends. But, but the general but, concept is both bad. However, yeah. What it sounded like y'all were saying, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Is I know, okay I know what I sound like, it's, but it's that's okay not what I'm for, saying. For Zelda to have their content no. locked because it's just paid without the amiibo, but it's well, not that's okay. That's not what I said. Though. No, that's not what we said. They had more I content said it's with that tied DLC to a too. new story content, but. I didn't say you buy the, uh, the hard mode alone in Zelda. So I never it's just said the fact that, that it's yeah. the hard mode alone. Yeah, yes, that's ridiculous. Character. Yeah, you just literally it's put not a like hard you mode get a whole new, You're not getting new story DLC yeah. in the Samus game with the Amiibo. You're getting a harder mode. That's it. That's it. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous to have to spend, like, what? how much was that thing? I think they're, the Amiibo is, is that, like, that 30 That you have bucks. to get in the, the two-pack, right? It's yeah, it's a two-pack. It's $30. Yeah, so 30 you have to pay $30 for a hard bucks. mode. That doesn't make sense to that's me. disgusting. As opposed to $15 for hard mode plus an extra story plus some extra content and other stuff. There's a big difference there. Big. See, me and Nia were on the same page. I was thinking but, the same question she was thinking. But it's <laughs> not. But at the same time, I don't like, I mean, where, where I was coming from with the, well, let the people pay 99 cent for just the hard mode if you're putting it behind a fucking Yeah, I don't boy. even agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. But I mean, goddamn something. So that they're not having to pay a whole thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. So they don't have to pay a full whole okay. thirty dollars or right. something, like, or just give it to them. All right. I, 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 I do they still do they still from, sell those like amiibo cards? Is that still a thing? I think it was just for Animal Crossing. Uh, just just for Animal Crossing. Oh, All right, but let me dumb. let me get Keith everything. in here. I, I yeah, hear y'all's point now, y'all. Yo, you made your voices very clear. <laughs> Keith, why don't you get in here and, and, and go ahead and talk about this before we move on? The, the difference between the Amiibo is that it's going to be used for other games. It could be used for the Metroid Prime 4 that's coming up. So it's it's not just, you know, it stops with this uh, Samus Returns game. 
So you're gonna be able to continue to use these amiibos, but I don't. I'm I'm like I'm on y'all side when it comes to amiibo. I don't want to buy them for extra content, but at least you know that later on down the line you will be able to play those things. But coupon, you said that if it was a dollar, even though you say you don't want to pay for hard mode, it sounds like it is the amiibo. It sounds like the issue is it's a toy. I don't want to buy the toy, but I don't mind paying for hard mode if it's a dollar. See, I could okay. Well, I collect the amiibo, so it doesn't bother me whatsoever. I don't plan on getting this this amiibo at all. Before I'm trying to. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to uh, trying to figure it out because like I ground. for yeah like a middle ground or something. It's only a middle ground what I'm trying to come at. Me yeah. personally, nobody should pay for shit for a hard mode. Period. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's where I stand. Point like, blank. Nobody should have to no one that. should pay for shit. It should just be a hard mode after you play the game on. Like after you play the the, or, the original hard mode, then that fusion mode should be unlocked. That's yeah. how it should go. Yeah. That's how I feel. But to mitigate the whole buying the amiibo for anybody who don't give a fuck about an amiibo, maybe a 99 cent, you know, fusion mode on eShop or something is the alternative. But I refer, I prefer they just, you play the game twice, on, you play the game normal mode, hard mode, and then you unlock fusion mode. That's how I prefer yeah. it. Period. Like maybe it should have been like you play the standard mode and then when you finish and beat that, you get the hard mode, then you play right. that and then you can get the fusion. Yep, mode. that's exactly that's how I feel. Been. It should that's how it should be, yeah. period, point blank. Yeah, and that's... the whole amiibo thing is just if you want if you're getting the amiibo anyway as a collector's edition, you can unlock fusion mode without having to do the other two. Right. That's exactly. how I think that would it should be. Period. That's a good that's a good way of doing that. They should have yeah, it to be that's how it should be. Like, yeah, there's, we have fusion mode no on this. There's no reason yeah. why a difficulty mode should be locked behind yeah. a paywall. Yeah. Definitely. I agree. It doesn't make sense. And, cool. now you, and you know, in a, in a in <laughs> last generation, you know, we were trying to tell y'all, like, this DLC stuff might get out of hand, and here it is in 2017, and yeah, and then you know, I just like, to... let, let's just be real. Like nobody used to shit on DLC more than Nintendo fans, right? And then when Nintendo started doing it, they ate that shit up. Yeah, and now mm -hmm. Nintendo's like, fuck it, we'll just do whatever. We and want. I just they, wanted to they, throw they something out it. there that um, are we really able to use these amiibo for other games? Like, have we really? No, they even changed really the been... rule with that. Yeah, like... have they really done that? Because I I haven't really seen it. Like, I can use my um Super Smash Brothers amiibo on other games, but not to a but to a certain extent. But to a certain but, extent. but they've it, changed it, it now. And they like, changed it. It used now to be got, if, I had, if I had one Mario Amiibo, I could use that same Mario Amiibo in all the games. But now, but they now have with line. the Samus one, you need four different Samus Amiibo to get the four different add-ons. Yeah, it's yeah, so, not like you can use the Super Smash Brothers Amiibo. Yeah, I can't yeah, use my Smash Because you were Smash supposed to be able Samus. to just use Samus, like Zero Suit Samus exactly. and the regular Samus. And you could use either one of them and you could get all that stuff unlocked. But now all of a sudden I got to buy a two-pack that's yeah. 30 damn dollars with a fucking fusion mode on have, it. You have to have four... <laughs> You have to have four Samus Amiibo to oh. have all the access to that game. Yep. Isn't yeah, that insane? Yeah. That's, that a little, crazy? that's a little annoying. And two of them you won't see anymore, for the most part. The Steel yeah. Suit Samus yeah. and the regular Samus, you won't see that too much anymore. I, I agree. We'll have, to, we'll have to talk about this another day, about the okay. whole Amiibo thing another day. But I, I see everybody's points, and you guys made great points. Um, yeah. Hopefully Nintendo figures it out, but you know they cash in on Fix it, Nintendo. The lines of Amiibo. They getting into Nintendo, it. So Nintendo, 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 Nintendo. <laughs> so if nobody else in the community has told you, we've told you. So just keep your eyes peeled. That's all I'm gonna say. It's, so it's gonna get go worse before it get better. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and move on to our next newsy topic. So Nintendo is bringing back the Nintendo World Championships. I'm actually really excited for this. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm, I'm a cornball. I really like this when they had it at what was it e3 2016 uh, i think so no that was 15 2015 because they had it before that awful e3 presentation <laughs> i thoroughly oh the world championships uh, like uh, the part with the mario maker and i like that's the only part i like with the mario other. maker part yeah that was amazing um, so anyway, let's go ahead and give you guys the details on what's going on with the Nintendo World Championship. So they're going to be starting this in October, and this is from Nintendo's uh, official website for their Nintendo World Championships. Uh, it says, this October, Nintendo fans will put their gaming sp skills to the ultimate test in an epic battle to win the Nintendo World Championships 2017. It all kicks off with eight qualifying events at Best Buy stores across the United States. Join the celebration of um, Nintendo's past, present, and future, and maybe even win a trip to NYC for the final. For the final, so it's open to residents of the United States and Canada, inc excluding Quebec. 
So I, it says that they're going to be having events on the August 19th and the 20th in New York and the San Francisco Bay Area. On the 26th and the 22nd, the 27th, there's going to be events in Chicago and Los Angeles. On September 2nd and 3rd, there's going to be events in Minneapolis and uh, Dallas. And then on September 9th and 10th, there's going to be events in Seattle and Miami. So if you live anywhere near these areas, go there and uh, participate. And you might be able to make it to the finals. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to shoot you down to NYC at the Nintendo World Store where you can duke it out with the other finalists until they get um, an official winner. It doesn't have the Canadian, uh, the Canadian places on the website, but they say that they're going to host it in Canada as well. So maybe uh, Nintendo of Canada has the... Um, locations on their site i'm not really sure but if you are in any of these areas um there is a registration form on the official nintendo website um where you can apply so anybody want to talk about the nintendo world championships anybody interested in this at all in the panel don't care no don't care not okay. really <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> okay well i'm i'm gonna look forward to watching the finals okay hopefully they have some, some really interesting uh um competitors this year i know that i games, hope they have people that know how to play games this time i do too but you know what that this kind of reminds me when me and coupon were just watching what was it the tournament we were watching i think we were watching we were watching poking, poking tournament we were watching poking. poking and i think we saw and, a little bit of arms and we were the watching arms, arms as well the, the arms one was good, good. yeah like when they were having, when the sorry people were playing, it wasn't that interesting. But then when the beasts were in like the finals, that's when it got yeah, hyped. That's so when it got hyped. It's got it's like that at any tournament. Like there's gonna be some people that's really not so good, but then like when it narrows down to the really really good people, that's when it's hyped. So I'm actually looking forward to that. This is for the 3ds. This tournament it says the game is for Mario Kart for 3ds. Mario Kart what? for 3ds. What? Yes. Is that it? I'm that looking at the bottom really half old. of it. Look at the bottom half down here. It's saying qualifiers will be held. It's Mario. The game is Mario Kart Seven for the Nintendo 3DS families. Oh. Time out. Like, no, ain't nobody trying to watch this. Nobody wants easy. to play. Okay, I don't. I don't Why would they do that? Like, they nobody, just released nah, Mario Kart I'm 8 sorry, Deluxe. no. That's it. That's a fail. Mario <laughs> if it's Mario Kart Seven, I don't care anymore. Okay, y'all have yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah a she's fail. right. There's a there's a 12 and younger, like bracket and then there's a 13 and old bracket and they're both for mario kart 7. okay yeah this is care. trash this is no confirmed thanks. trash move on confirmed move trash on. all right let's move on if this was actually hey, hey, hey. the console hey. games i would care you you get a chance to play mario odyssey yeah, i played it but that's not for regular people though that's for right to go to these two goals like, and I, I played that shit and i didn't have to play a goddamn 3ds to play. <laughs> right <laughs> okay nah, i'm good i'm actually disappointed that's wild like that's pretty lame that, that? Mario Kart 7 is what like it's such five an old six game. years old now why is this a thing i don't like i don't understand they they oh, literally they just brought out mario kart 8 yeah, a couple months ago mario yeah so kart while you're doing splatoon. that you can you can play mario yeah, Odyssey could, yeah, and Metroid Samus. well i guess splatoon yeah, wouldn't arms. work because that's a team game but like yeah. mario kart 8 deluxe arms you could have did they arms did, tournament. yeah they arms mario kart 8 deluxe like, they did Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. Y'all are no, nah, that's trash what now. I'm sorry. This is a game that they're playing, but then when they actually go there, they're gonna be playing other stuff. So maybe. I mean, if they do something, I mean, one. I hope so because this is not no. <laughs> if it's just Mario Kart 7, I'm no longer interested. That yeah, no, wouldn't even I'm... make sense. Yes. All right. So moving on. <laughs> so there's some. Um, Dragon Quest news and some other uh, Japanese sales number news from last <laughs> week. And so uh, the thing of note here is that Dragon Quest XI did very, very well in Japan, did very well on the 3DS um, and the PlayStation 4 um, as well. So for the 3DS uh, on release, it made, it sold 1,148,888 copies, which is really, really impressive. And then for the PlayStation 4, it was 950,315. Um, the third bestseller was Splatoon. Uh, the fourth bestseller was uh, late. There's a Professor Layton, a new Professor Layton in Japan. Hmm. Is there a new Professor Layton that's only in Japan? 
I didn't hear about this. Wait, because what? On four, number four, it says Layton's Mystery Journey. It says it came out July 20th. What? Yeah, what? That I was thought a... that was another well, you... Layton. They better bring that over. The Millionaire's Conspiracy. <laughs> wow. Oh. Okay, so number five was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Number three, six was Hey Pikmin Womp. Number seven uh -huh. was Final <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> she said Womp. <laughs> Final Fantasy 13, the Zodiac Age. Uh, Final Fantasy uh, 13 had a. That's 12. Sorry, Final Fantasy 12 had a. Um, what you call it? Was it like an expansion or something? Um, and number eight was uh, some game I will not pronounce. Some Japanese only game. Sumiko Garashi. Sumiko Garashi. Koko Doko Nandasu. Number nine is a game called Kenka Bacho Otame. Number ten is Arms. And I would go through the whole twenty list, but just know there's a lot of Nintendo games on this list. Nintendo has got Japan on lock. Which is crazy. Not really what, crazy. Like, how come there's no Xbox One games on this list? Mm, stop. It's a great stop. point. A great point. <laughs> the top, top, top 20 games of Japan. There is Xbox one. It's there. one down here. It's right down here. It says number 11, Xbox 194. Oh my god. They only sold 94 <laughs> units that week. That's crazy. <laughs> That's so there you go. Xbox made it. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. You did it, it guys. Xbox game. You're, up, did you're it. up from 77 last week. You're doing big things. Oh my you did god. it. But as far as uh, they're getting outsold by the damn Wii U. Oh no! But as oh. far as Nintendo is concerned, they're doing very, very good in Japan. Yeah, they um, are. They're leading uh in the not only the software side of things but the hardware side of things because number one and two are the 2DS XL. Number two is the Switch. So that's really um. That's really, really good for Nintendo. So these are just sales things. Anybody have anything to say about sales before we move on? Damn, so PlayStation, wow, the PlayStation, PlayStation went up 3 from is making... <laughs> oh, snap. The PlayStation the 3 is selling more. <laughs> Dragon Quest probably is about well, Yeah, that was probably from numbers. Dragon Quest. That's crazy. 23,000 to 82,000? That's, That's a huge jump. Shout out to Nintendo, man. I hope this breeds more games, man. I hope so, too. I, yeah, definitely. But, you know, Capcom's still waiting, though. <laughs> oh, my God. I and I Capcom forgot what X-Men so are. You know, wait and see, right? Wait and see. That was last week. I ain't play I forget Capcom. I ain't play Don't wait and see. That was last week. We're not going to dwell on the past. So, the last newsy topic before we go into our discussion topic is going to be about The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. They got another update uh, this week. And so, here are the patch notes. It says, this is from the official Nintendo America support site. We have fixed the issue in Pack 1, Master of the Trials Expansion Pass, in which defeating certain enemies for Kilton was not counted toward completion when, the game, when playing the game in Master Mode. Um, In-game items can now be obtained from launching the software from certain articles uh, distributed through the new news channel, the Breath of the Wild news channel that you guys get on the home menu, which can be accessed through the news on the home menu. This channel is expected to open on 8 9 2017, which is tomorrow. Depending on your game progress and location, certain items may not be obtainable. Various, various fixes to improve gameplay. So just a uh, couple of updates for you guys who are interested in this, or maybe some of you guys who actually have the DLC. Uh, oh, and uh, just side note before we go on to the next thing. Kofi put up his video about Kid Smooth. His, oh snap! Definitely watching it after the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but the the interesting thing about this update is the thing that you're gonna be able to get through the news channel. It seems like it kind of works the same way Spot Pass worked on the 3DS, where you would get various things sent to your 3DS through a, a wireless connection. So I think that's really interesting. Uh, anybody want to talk about the Legend of Zelda news patch notes before we move on to our discussion for tonight? <laughs> nope. All right. Crickets. So let's go ahead and talk about our discussion tonight. So I kind of want to frame this video, uh, this part of the discussion um, by saying this. So our topic tonight is going to be, um, is the... Uh, the Switch selling so well because it's actually a good device or because it's popular and maybe word of mouth is the reason why it's selling so well. So 
I kind of want to frame this video because I did watch a video from Mr. T. Shout out to Mr. T. And this is not like a knock or anything to his video or his views or anything like that. Anything like that. I just thought it was a very interesting topic that I kind of wanted to kind of uh, delve further into with a couple of people on my panel tonight. So you know how people go, oh, they're talking about Mr. T's video. Like, yeah, it's an interesting topic. So why not talk about it? Everything ain't shade. Um, so let's Unless go real's here. <laughs> Unless real is here, because real adds shade to everything. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, Dark Star. <laughs> Yay, Dark Star's here. Okay, so I'm gonna frame this video by saying, okay, so I saw uh, Mr. T's video, and he had a very interesting uh, position, and he was talking about how he um, was wondering if the reason why the Switch was selling is because it's an actual good device, or simply because it's popular, and a lot of people were getting on the quote unquote bandwagon because it's popular. Then he also brought up the fact that the Switch has a lot of the same issues that the Wii U had, and even maybe some worse issues than the Wii U had. But because the Wii U was not as popular or didn't sell as much, and I'm just paraphrasing what he's saying. So if he, you know, watches this video, I don't want to uh, misinterpret what he was saying. That you know maybe that's the reason why a lot of people didn't buy the Wii U because it wasn't as popular, it wasn't as well renowned as the Switch is now. So, um, I don't, have you guys seen his video on the top? Yeah, I watched it. No, I haven't. You haven't? I think I did. I think I did. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with Alex. So, Alex, how do you feel about this? Do you think that the Switch is selling because of word of mouth, because it's popular, or because it's a legitimately good advice? Like, how do you, how do you feel about this, uh, the whole dynamic of the Switch and how well it's doing? It's selling because... The quote-unquote gimmick makes sense this time. It's selling because when you see the Switch, you see what it does, you get it instantly. You yeah. understand how it fits into your life. You understand, I can take this around with me. I can play games on the go. I can take it. I can be at home, play the same game. I don't, I don't miss a step. It's a cool idea. It does something that the other two consoles can't do, never will do, regardless of how many titty flops they got. <laughs> it don't matter. This console is something unique to the console market, and people get it. They understand it. And launching with possibly the greatest game of all time, Breath of the Wild, certainly helped. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the Wii U never had a console-selling game like that for years. Yeah. Like... <sighs> I don't, I don't want to say this specifically about Mr. T, but a lot of guys who champion the Wii U cannot let it go. They can't let it go that it was a failure. They can't let it go that people don't like it. They can't let it go that the idea of the Wii U was just bad. The two-screen idea at home doesn't make sense. It's cumbersome. People don't want to live that life. They don't want to deal with a bulky ass controller. It is what it is. Like they made a bad idea. They moved on. The Switch, they got it right. That's all it is. Yeah. Yes, it has some of the games that Wii U had. Fantastic. But people aren't gonna buy a shit system to play good games. Yeah. They want the hardware to be something that fits into their life, something that they like. That's that's all it ever was. It's all it, that's all it is. And yes, absolutely I agree with them. The Switch has a lot of problems. Especially when it comes to the online stuff, the voice chat stuff, we've all talked about this, it's trash. Yeah. But you're comparing a system that's five years old, that never had any problems fixed, to a console that's been out for five months. Yeah. It's not a fair comparison. Yeah. Now, if we're talking a year, two years down the road, and the Switch has none of this shit fixed, then I'm with you. It's time to start talking about this shit. But, like, we're five months in, you're comparing it to a system that bombed on every single aspect. Other than having good games, and I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I, I get you love the Switch, that's cool. It has good games, but it's a bad system. And yeah. they, they never believed in it. Yeah. But you can tell they are 100% behind the Switch, and people see that. They see the marketing, they see the games are coming, and they see that Nintendo is actually trying this time. And that, I think, mm -hmm. is more powerful than anything they ever did for the, the Wii U. Yeah. All right, so I want to go ahead and open the floor up to Keith. Keith, how do you feel about the success of the switch and you saw you saw t's video right how do you feel about the whole success of the switch and all the things it's lacking and what it has and all of that i think nintendo is finally realizing their position and they're playing to their strengths now yeah, yeah. um they've always dominated in handheld but uh -huh. 
um, they never could get everybody because you still had that 13 million on the Wii U who probably didn't, all of those people didn't buy a, uh, I probably had that backwards. Yeah, I probably got that back. Screw what I was trying to say. But, uh, <laughs> oh, snap. Yeah, but um, you, you, they're playing to their strengths. They're, they're, they made a console that you can take on the go that's fitting its role. People have always said that Nintendo is the second option. It's the, it's the alternative console. It's and the complimentary they, console. Oh, it's yeah. a complimentary console. And they're, they're finally playing to their role because when I get off my PC or if I had a PlayStation 4 or Xbox and I want to go somewhere, I can continue playing games on my Switch, different games, of course, Yeah. smaller smaller games, and they're just, they're basically just playing up to it. Yeah. And then the fact that, um, you know, the extra little tech that they put in there, like the Joy-Cons and stuff like that, that helps bring uniqueness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just I just think that they're just playing to their strengths, basically. And yeah. um, Alex, man, come on, man. The Wii U is, the Wii U wasn't it bad. I think the power of the Wii U is just what it, what hurt? Can you? The power. I don't think it's the I don't, power. I'm oh, sorry. The console just hurts. Power, man. Oh, like when you, you, imagine... you have games that look as good as Mario Kart 8. It's not the power. Yeah. Can you imagine playing a game like Grand Theft Auto 5? Hear me out. Playing a game like Grand Theft Auto 5 with the map constantly on the bottom screen when you're playing. Like to me, that's all I ever wanted, but I never got it. Mm. So but it's not like the console couldn't run it. This is true. This is true. It was on the 360. <laughs> <laughs> So like, it, it wasn't. A, it's like it's not the power of the console. It's like the idea of the console didn't catch on with people. Yeah, I'm gonna go one further for you. I can see. All right, coupon. Go ahead and give your. Uh... So my thing is the number one thing that you notice with the Switch is they're not marketing to children like they did with the Wii U oh, yeah, and I the heard Wii. Them a lot. And they have pulled away from that and realized that their core audience aren't just children anymore. It's the, it's the children and it's the adults who grew up with Nintendo and their children. So they're catering to like a kind of a young hip audience as well as, you know, children can jump on board if they if they like. But I think with the Wii U is um, the system itself, it wasn't really up to par for how for the great games that it got. And people aren't going to go and buy a fairly shitty system to buy very great games. And though and we're not talking about the games. The games were great. It was the system itself was just cumbersome, bulky, weird. So um you didn't quite know what it was. Like um this is my experience buying a Wii U. Like I went into the store to actually get a PS4 that day and I ended up getting a Wii U when I realized that Nintendo had a new system. I didn't even know they had a new system out. When I found out they did, I was like, "Cool." When I first saw it, it looked like it was just an add-on to a Wii. <laughs> but once I opened the box and see what it was, I figured it out because I'm a gamer and gamers can figure shit out fast. But your average person is not going to understand that. They're going to see this cumbersome, bulky little you know screen and think that, oh, I can take this home and play on my Wii. And they think the Wii U is literally the screen. With the Switch, you know what it is. You know what you're getting before you even go into the store because you've seen it on all the advertisements that you haven't seen a Wii U at all. Wii U didn't get as much advertising as well. Um, they didn't back it. Nintendo didn't back the Wii U as much as they could have and should yeah. probably should have. They were they didn't have faith in the Wii U, and that's another thing that people can pay attention. People pay attention to. If you don't have faith in your system, your core audience is not going to want to buy it, and the people who were possibly interested are not going to want to buy it because if the company don't don't have faith in it, why the hell should I drop some? you know, money for that. Yeah. But you see that they're backing the Switch 110%. You see that they're putting in more effort. You see that the advertisements aren't catered to just children. There are, uh, there's core audiences that they're targeting and more hip and old, adult-like audiences. You see there's more games that are becoming a fairly mature games that we're getting as opposed to just the, you know, kitty games that people want to scream about. Um, and just overall, they have faith in this system. And being that it is a ga- is a system on the go, it works for how fast you know how fast paced most of our lives are. Most of us gamers today, we have you know jobs, we have kids, we have family and things that we have to do, and we don't have time to sit down and play a game. But if we could yeah. take a system with us, and in between those little down times in our lives, we could you know pop open a game and play for a quick moment. Yeah. It works and. 
I think that's something that Nintendo does very well as far as um, gaming is concerned is handheld because a lot of people want Nintendo to go third party. But I think they did one better. They decided not to go full on third party <laughs> and they decided to make a system that works for uh, works for your uh, go getter, your out, yeah. your everyday person play and people who. Strengths. Yeah, they play it to their strengths. Pretty much what Keith said, just straight up play to their strengths, straight up. Uh, they're they're you know, they're getting behind their system. Yeah and all that stuff and sure there are some problems with the switch we all already said it it came out way too early but they had no choice and so we're okay and so some of us understand it's okay i went in knowing exactly what i was going to get i knew that they weren't going to have the online right away i knew they weren't going to have various applications i knew there was going to be some uh, hiccups here and there and they have had their fair share of issues but at the same time those issues weren't as bad as what you had to deal with on the wii u for the most part and the games are like they're just shelling out these games left and right. You got your indies, you got your, you got your um third, your fairly you got some third parties because you know uh, Japanese has third parties. You guys don't forget those Japanese games were getting third third parties as well. You're getting some Western third parties even though they're still you know they got to dip their feet in the water and figure out if they want to join join in. But that's their problem. And then also we have you know iOS games as long as they you know as we said as long as they stay with in you know their lane yeah. but like overall i think with that being said people are realizing and word of mouth and all sorts of stuff and there's advertisements on radios now for this thing like i'm driving in my car and hear an advertisement for yeah. a switch you didn't hear that for wii u you barely even got a freaking advertisement on on your tv or anything for a wii u so there's a lot of marketing out there for this thing so yeah. it's 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 a it's a combination of a lot of different it's things that has this thing. Yeah, it's a lot of different things that plays with the Switch being as popular as it is and getting out there. And one thing that I kind of want to add to that is I feel like because of the Wii U's, um, because of the, the because of the fact that the Wii U did not catch on, I think that the Switch kind of gets a an unfair. Um, how can I say this? When people, it does kick when up, it gets like a head say, start, I guess. Well, I was going to say, because I think that because the Switch is doing so well, people kind of give it a very unfair um, narrative. Like people say, oh, well, the Switch is only successful because the Wii U did poorly. But like, they, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, like I, yeah. Feel, I feel that that's kind of unfair to the Switch because... Like, there's so many, like, there's a lot of things that the Switch lacks. Like, that's, yeah. that's not even a debate. Like, we've talked uh-huh. about it that's, that's from like day saying, one. That's like saying the Xbox One did poorly because the 360 was successful. Yeah. That, that makes no sense. <laughs> like, I think that the Switch, like, people people like to, like to lump the Switch with the Wii U for some right. reason. And it's so unfair. Because they and, want like, it to be the Wii U. Right. And yeah. I think that's, that's really unfair. Fail. Like the like the switch is a it's a it's a device that doesn't do a lot of things. We've been very honest and transparent about that on Team Red Talk since the switch was announced. Like yeah. you know, we've been very transparent. Like we have no blinders on. You know, our um, honeymoon phase for the switch has gone. It's passed, and now we're able to really kind of analyze it and kind of see things for what they are. And I really kind of don't like when people kind of compare the switch and the wii because in my opinion they're two different they're two different different beasts with two different circumstances around them like you guys noted before um for one the message is very clear what what the switch is we know exactly what the switch is um the switch is for all of the features it lacks for all the multimedia things that it lacks what it does have is games and you can laugh all you want about indie games and ios games but that's right. a lot more games than the wii you got <laughs> yeah. and not only yeah. that but nintendo oh. has their stuff together this time around we've pretty much had a nintendo exclusive game for pretty much every month of the year and it's continuing through the rest of the year and that's something that we really couldn't say and about it's, the wii it's not even like buster time. crap like mario party 10 and animal exactly. crossing exactly like Amigo they're Festival. actual they're actual triple a and double a nintendo exclusives that people can get behind and like and and as far as the wii u this is kind of how i feel i've said this on team red before i feel like we talk about this a lot because people keep comparing it to the wii u but um 
Oh, I see thing. why they do though. Okay, like, I, I see Zelda's why they there, do. there, Mario Kart's there. I see. I see that. Yeah. I, I understand that. I wholeheartedly understand that. But they're also forgetting all of the other games that haven't touched the Wii U that yeah. we're playing and we're getting this year. So I think it's a little unfair, even still. So it's like this is the way that I look at it. When I say that the Wii U wasn't that good of a system, I'm not even talking about the stuff like the marketing stuff. Like that ain't my problem. That's Nintendo's problem, right? Like, it doesn't matter if, if you market a system or not. If the system is good, it's good, right? right? My thing with the Wii U that I felt like it was a bad system was the stuff that I had a problem with as a gamer, right? Like, the consistent game draws. Like, you would not get games sometimes for, like, six months at a time on the Wii U, which is unacceptable. You know, when I first got my Wii U, um, the, uh, the game that I got my Wii U for and pre-ordered my Wii U for was Pikmin 3. And obviously, that you know, we know that that game didn't come until, like, almost the next year after the Wii U had already been out. So... There were a lot of instances like that where it would just take way too long to have a game that had any depth and any weight to it. So that was like my problem with the Wii U as a gamer. Also, the fact that, you know, yes, you know, the Wii U did not have features. The Switch doesn't have any features either. But one thing that I can say about the Switch's lack of features versus the Wii U's lack of features is that at least Nintendo is addressing it addressing them and 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 they are creating a language around and a context around um the lack of features and why they're not there and when they're coming and things like that now we we we're mad about the chat out that sucks right but at least nintendo's talking about it they see that there's a void there and they're at least addressing it and they're trying to get your feedback about it and you guys know I've been I've been the worst when it comes when it's come down to this app. I've been crapping all over this app on my channel. Like, you guys watch my personal channel, but I can give Nintendo merit for addressing it. With the Wii U, we talked about all this stuff. We gave feedback to Nintendo. They never addressed it. And the most significant update we got for the Wii U was folders. That's why people are taking to the Switch more than the Wii U because even for what's not there. They're at least giving us the courtesy as a community as a, as a fan, and as a fan base to address the stuff. We're working on it. We're working on we it. Did. Give us time. We're working on it. With the Wii U, you didn't hear that. They just they just, all just crickets. Day. They ignored crickets. you all day. But that's I think that's one of the main things. And Matthew is still on my thunder. I was going to bring this up. <laughs> we already know that we got uh, the Pokemon game is coming and we got yeah. um, Metroid Prime 4 is coming. So what what they didn't do with the Wii U, from my memory, if memory serves me correctly, we were getting games. There were old third party games, but we were getting games, and we were also getting um, what you call those indie games in between. But we didn't know what was coming next. We didn't know what Nintendo was bringing. That's like you true. said, like you said, yeah, the, they did a very poor through. job, at, like keeping people interested in their console. And yeah. I just feel like they took a page out of Sony's book. Sony will announce a game three years before it comes out. And they're like, people will go out and say, well, I need to go ahead and get my console now. Yeah. And I think that's what people are doing. They're like, Pokemon is coming? Mm -hmm. I have to go get my Switch now. So I will have one. So when the droughts hit, yeah. I would already have it out the way. Metroid yeah. Prime 4 is coming? You mm -hmm. know, those type of things Nintendo has to continue to do. Yep. Yeah. I think, I think we'll continue to see success mm -hmm. from them. One thing that I will say about the fact that the Wii U did get third-party games, yes. It did get indie games, yes. But they were still infrequent. Like, the sure. third-party games we got, like, it was the launch window third-party games, and then after that, nothing. Or they were very infrequent. Like, we would get a random appearance of something like Deus Ex. We got the random appearance of uh, Need for Speed. But for the most part very infrequent there was i remember at one point there i was buying an indie game or at least a couple of indie games at least once a week because there was a point in time on the wii u where you would get like some really dope indie games on the eShop week to week yeah and then it stopped so like everything was pretty infrequent from third-party games to nintendo games to indie games and that combined with all of the stuff that was lacking like the features kind of just ha made everybody really frustrated and it came just crashing down because you know That's even if if it doesn't have good features at least have games you yeah. right. like at least be good at something and that's something that the switch is doing at least for the rest of the year now next year yeah. that's another that's another story so 
I see where you're coming from. I, I see where T is coming from. Oh, and from. we have a full-on Fire Emblem next year, too. Yeah, and I and I, I understand that. I understand all of that. I see all of that. But from the, from the perspective of me as a gamer, if you don't have games, and if your games are coming so infrequently to the point that I forget that I have your console, that's a problem. And even when the games come out, they're subpar. Yeah. Like, we had Kirby's Rainbow Curse, which is trash. We had Star Fox Zero, which was trash. We had Mario Party 10, which was trash. We had Amiibo Mario Festival, Tennis. which was trash. We had Mario Tennis, which was trash. Yeah. Like, really, the Wii U had, like, one really good year, which was, like, 2014. 2014. There was a couple yeah. of games that came out in 2013 and a couple of good games in 2015 with Xenoblade. But aside from that, like, and just Mario the Rangers. quality of, it, of exclusives and then the frequency was just very much lacking. And I think... I think that even if the Wii U was in the position where it was, where it wasn't selling well and the marketing wasn't great, but it at least had a good caliber of games and they came out a little bit more frequently, I don't think people would be as sour on the Wii U as they are now. That's just my yeah. personal opinion. Um, and as far as people saying that the reason why the Switch is selling is because of popularity, I think it's a whole lot more other things going on that's with one with the thing. Switch. Yeah, that's just oh, one wow. thing. That's but there's one. More. That's one piece of the puzzle. Yeah, very small piece too. Because because <laughs> I guarantee you that if the Switch wasn't getting game to game to game once a month, because people get Nobody Nintendo consoles, right? People get Nintendo, Nintendo consoles for Nintendo games. We've had Zelda, we've had Mario Kart, we've had Splatoon, we've had Arms. We're getting Mario Rabbits, we're getting Xenoblade, we're getting Mario, we're getting Mario Fire Kingdom. Emblem Warriors. Like we're getting Pokemon. We're getting like, there's Pokemon. so many games coming yeah. in one year from Nintendo alone. Yeah. When was the last time we've been able to say that? Yeah, they're firing on all cylinders. Yeah, so so, I, so it makes me it makes me kind of worried. Just like so, you you coming out rocking hard the first year. <laughs> what you got like, like, next year? That, like I'm excited whole, and I'm worried at the same time. <laughs> that whole idea that the switch is selling because it's popular, like no fucking shit, retard. Yeah. Well, that's what the, wasn't, but that's if what it happened. Wasn't popular, it wouldn't iPhone, be selling. Like that's yeah, the and iPhone thing sells because it's popular. <laughs> like but, what is your point? <laughs> but here's the thing: it's selling because it's popular, but it's popular because but there's it's a good. reason that it's popular. Yeah. Right? It's really good. It's, it's, it's popular good. because it's good and it actually has good games and it has a it's, quantity of games and a it's quality not, of games that's up It's to not far. like when the PS4 came out and it was selling and nobody fucking knew why. Exactly. Even Sony didn't know. Yeah. They're like, we don't know why this console Oh, we have no idea. It's they exactly like that. the Xbox. Like, why we have no, no idea. The PS4 at launch is, a, an, ex, is an example of a game that's selling. That's an anomaly. But not the Switch. So... So I, I hate I hate how I I'm so passionate behind my words. So I'm not saying this to be ugly to T's opinion. I respect T a great deal. I watch his videos. I respect his opinions. I'm just very passionate. You know, I'm a black woman. I'm passionate. I say a lot of I say things. <laughs> I say things with passion. Coupon knows. Um, so I don't want anybody thinking that I have a problem with what T had to say. This is just my point of view, not to discredit his point of view. Um, but anyway. Anybody want to say anything about this? Any last words before we go ahead and give our get our questions out? Questions. Yeah, Wii U. Let's go. Oh, oh my oh, goodness! Oh, oh. All right. And, and the, the, the last thing, man. Last thing. It it also stoned that the PS3 and the 360 were still getting games, and the Wii U was supposedly more powerful. And but, they couldn't you know, get the game. Yeah. They didn't get the game. But they so didn't I'm, get I'm the just, game. Just leave it at that. Yeah. Well, that's still happening now, though. It's still, it's still happening now, even with the Switch. So, yeah, the Switch and the Switch is by new. far has more um, capabilities. Every, every than week, the, Wii. the Xbox and PS4 get a shit ton of games, and the, the Switch and doesn't Switch really. Switch is not getting those games. Yeah. 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 Some of it has to do with install base. Some of it has to do with bias in the um, you know, but, the stratosphere like, and at least other recently, things. Recently, I don't know hey. if you guys noticed, but recently, like a lot of games are just being announced for the Switch out of the blue. Out yeah, of the blue. Are. So I, I could, I could dig it. Like yeah. that, like that, you didn't get for the Wii U at all. Not no I, random I unannounced really, game. I really <laughs> wish Nintendo would have a direct just for these indie and third party. Yeah. Games. You know, they so have like, let us know. The they need to have another one. They, they need, need to have more. another. Just like, be like, hey, we got an indie, you know. We're, we're getting games showcase. that we didn't even hear about yet. And they're just like, yeah. oh, we're on the way. It's like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I <laughs> like, bet you we... if they talked about that Gear Club game, people would be like, oh, snap. Oh, shit, we yeah. got a racing game. Fuck that. Right. So let's go ahead and get these questions because we're reaching an hour and a half. Oh, so boy have, boy I'm not going to be able to approach all of these, you guys, because our time is running out. Um, 
But I have a question, a couple of questions here that are interesting to me. One from Phantom One Op, he says, do you think that games should decrease in price from sixty dollars? Which games? Just, Just games any games. Games, or games are sixty dollars. Mm. Uh, we'll get. We'll get. We'll. I think games, if they get decreased, um, because how much they cost to make the um in this day and age, because they take they take a lot of money for some odd reason, because they're trying to make cinematic shit. <laughs> but for the yeah. most part, I think that if they take the price down, that um we're not we're gonna get way shittier games than we technically get for the most part now. Like people, they're the devs are not gonna work as hard. They're not gonna yeah. put as much, you know, uh elbow grease into their games and we're probably going to get a very low quality set of games if they lower the oh, prices we already get broken games. we already get yeah, yeah we, already we already get that now TV. so like they're pretty, it's, just, but they're it's gonna be it's gonna be double what we get now or triple that if they lower the price in games I because feel they're not they're definitely not going to put that much into it i feel like there's a lot of games that shouldn't be 60 dollars yeah like, some games shouldn't Definitely. Like, not yes. every game has to be $60. I know there's the perception if your game comes out and it's not $60, that means it's not a high-quality game. I don't know why people have this perception, mm. uh, which is why I like what Hellblade did. They launched their game at $30, and hopefully it sells well. And people, like, jump on board, and then we get more games like that. Because, like, stuff like Kirby, although I love Kirby and Yoshi and stuff, those they shouldn't, shouldn't be $60, $60 games. games. No, yeah. definitely not. And, like... Mario Odyssey, Zelda Breath of the Wild, those are big, like, open-world games pushing mm -hmm. this console to the yeah, limit. Those are totally people. fine. Those yeah. I can justify spending $60 for those. But, like, there's a lot of games, like, the Call of Duty games that come out every year, they're $60. Drop the price and then you have $50 for DLC. It's like, why? Yeah. Why are they that much money? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. you're going to pay for it. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I believe that developers they they gotta feed their families, man. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, it's not even them. People, like it's it's publishers that set the price. The developers yeah. don't set anything. I mean, I know, but I'm just saying. Like at the end of the day, that money does still go back into the company. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree. There's certain games that should have a a certain price point because there's a lot of games out here that are sixty dollars and they're like super short and they don't really have a lot of content. So it's like. What are you using your resources on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, like, a lot of the time, they're spending most of their budget on marketing and mm -hmm. graphics. And, and like, I don't really think it should be like that, but that's just me. Yeah, it definitely shouldn't. Like, you mm -hmm. can make a game that looks good without going super realistic, and then mm -hmm. you'll save a lot of money that way. Yeah. And then you can lower your price, and then people will be mm -hmm. more inclined to buy your game. You know, a lot of people get mad at Nintendo for not trying to, like, push graphics to a certain extent, but it's like, like you kind of have point? to, you kinda why? Have to <laughs> understand why, though, because a lot of these games are, are like, approaching, like, movie They're almost budget. like Pixar like, good. Yeah. They're almost movie budget games. Like, if you're, if you're factoring in the development of the game, plus the marketing, plus the um, manufacturing of the discs and the carts and stuff like that, like, these games are really expensive to make. Very much. <laughs> anyway, yeah, like, wasn't Destiny yeah. 1 $500 million? Yeah, and a lot yeah. of it was because of the marketing. That's that's insane. That's, that's insane. more than a lot of movies. That's a movie budget. But let's go ahead and move on from this question. Let's go ahead and move on to another one from the homie Darkstar. Shout out to Darkstar. <laughs> what up, Dark? He said, have you guys noticed the amount of games that have been announced for the Switch recently? Do you think devs are really ready to dive into the system with support? Anybody want to take that? I'll, I'll, I think some them. of them are ready, yeah. Uh, go ahead, uh, Keith. Yeah, I, th I think so. Uh, you, people are having hard times finding one. Uh, mm. Switch, they may as well try to throw their games on there and get as much profit as they can while it's hot. Yeah, get true. It while it's yeah. hot. Pretty, pretty much every game on the Switch is selling. Yeah. It's crazy. Like if you go look on an eShop, it's like games that you wouldn't think would sell. Like everybody has their little time to shine in the top ten. I've noticed yeah. that on the eShop. I think with the Switch, like a lot of uh, developers who, if they utilize it, they could take they can make a monopoly on some like niche uh, genres in gaming. Like you got sports with the cars, mm -hmm. you know the cars. You got your sports games and you know uh, beat 'em ups and stuff. Like if you bring those niche uh, titles to the Switch, that that you aren't gonna really 
I mean, I think they would be able to make a lot of money back and be able to make some sparks fly and stuff. So I hope we see a lot more games that yeah. come into those genres as well. But yeah, like it's because right now it's fairly popular. It's you know, and there's plenty of room for like various different devs to just come in and just make a name for themselves, like out of nowhere, be like, "Here's my like, game." There's, like there's definitely a big gap to play around in because like I most mean, indie games don't go over twenty dollars right and then so. the next step up is 60. there's a huge gap there yeah you could, you could make a big name for yourself yeah you like you, if you start making games forty dollars like mm -hmm. people are gonna at least take a look at you where if your game is 60 and you're going up against battlefield no one's looking at you yeah. right but that's what i was talking about with the mobile games that floor is open take it yeah. yeah, but that's the under 20 market. Yeah. Just, just saying, it depends you know? on the game, too. Because if you have, like, a, a mobile game that, say, like, what is that game you were talking about, the shooter game? Like, say if that game uh, has, like, mad... Combat. Yeah, like, say if that game has, like, mad microtransaction with, like, guns and maps and stuff like that, Ugh. that might be enough content to justify something like a 30 to $40 uh, purchase on an eShop. But um, let's go ahead and get... You think so? Yeah. So let's go ahead and get one more question up in here and then we're going to bounce, give our outros. So we have a question here from, I saw it. There we go. Matthew Pipes. What are y'all's thoughts about Mario X Rabbits running at 900p, 30 frames per second? Anybody want to talk about that? I wouldn't know if game. you didn't tell me. I don't think it matters because of the type of game it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a turn based action. Well, not even, what is it considered? Turn based action? Is that what they call it? It's like a real yeah, turn based action. Yeah, well, like, yeah, it's not constant motion, so the 60 FPS doesn't really matter in this game. Yeah. And, like, if you didn't tell me that game was 900p, I would never know. Because that yeah. game is fucking gorgeous. Freaking Zelda's 900p, and you're just like, okay, who cares? Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> so, like, do I still get to reach that mountain, though? Okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anybody want to say anything about any of the questions that we have gotten that you weren't able to maybe say before we go ahead and get uh, the outros? I did see something that was, uh, it would probably be real quick. What is it? Uh, it was Quake SRK. He asked, should uh, F Zero come back? And I'm going to modify his question. Now he said, will it make a comeback? And I was going to say, should it even come back at this point? What's the point? It's, it's it's no point. Just we I have, just we have two put games in like Mario it Kart. With Fast Racing and Red Out on the Switch. So what's yeah. the thing? Just put just put um Captain Falcon and freaking Mario Kart. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> just, just do, I mean, you got no, his stage, throw, you got his throw stuff. His ass in just Mario throw him Kart in freaking and, Mario Kart and call him, it a day. Uh, there you go, F Zero. And done. Give him a beat em up game too. That's yeah. what I was going to say. If they really wanted to bring Captain Falcon back in some kind of way, make a game that incorporates him in some type of beat em up style. Like, I would take like a half racing, half beat, half -em, beat -em, up. em up type of deal. That, that sounds because fire. At this point, Captain Falcon is known for his Falcon Punch and not his racing yep. right. skills. <laughs> right. So he needs to Falcon Punch people straight up. And ain't nobody, I don't think anybody's really on board for a complete uh, F Zero I, game. I'm not going to lie. I would buy the heck out of an F Zero beat em up game. Like yeah. a beat em up? Yeah, if I could do more yeah. than just racing, if there's other things incorporated in that and it works and the things he does while he's doing the beat em up and the searching and all that stuff and then he goes to his race and all that, that would be great. But I just straight up F Zero racing, like we're yeah. just racing, like that would get kind of old fast. Oh, Y'all yeah. gotta be honest thing, with yourselves. And another thing that F Zero kind of has on its side is that it has a lot of dynamic characters. Like, if you guys ever played F-Zero, what was it, um, the one on the GameCube, it has a lot of interesting characters, like a lot of the different racers that kind of have their own, like, style and stuff like that. Like, if they really wanted to, like, modify F-Zero for the modern day, they could easily make a beat em up out of Cap Captain Falcon and then all of the other characters from that game. Or they could probably even, if they really wanted to do it, like, make a spinoff where they make like a straight up hand to hand fighter featuring Captain Falcon and all of these other people in the F Zero universe. I think that would work. Like if Nintendo wanted to make like a legit fighter that's not quirky like Smash Brothers and Arms, Captain Falcon would be the mascot to push a game like that. I think. 
I kind of see something like Beautiful Joe. Yeah. 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 Beautiful, Beautiful Joe's a beat em up, right? Yeah. 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 Something yeah. like that. Pretty yeah. Much. Yeah, yeah would it would definitely great. work in that kind of style. Yeah, I think that would actually work for uh, Captain Falcon because yeah. it's like over the top and, you know, extra. <laughs> and it wouldn't be the first time that Nintendo changed the genre. Like, right. Kid Icarus used to be a platformer, but they turned it into an action shooting game. So, I mean, yep, it's not so. out of the realm of possibilities for Nintendo to change the genre of Captain Falcon. And if they don't want to go full on changing the um genre they could at least do spin-off games where that's kind of like a thing like how mario kart branches off from um the, the original mario universe i think people would be yeah. able to get behind um something like that Sounds so good. that's all we have to talk about tonight i don't really want to go over uh time too much um so let's go ahead and do our outro so let's start with our guest mr keith norris for coming through thank you so much you've been an awesome awesome guest um, go ahead and give your outro. Let the people know where they can find you. Okay, okay, okay. Well, thank you for uh, having me. Uh, got a chance to fan out with you guys. <laughs> uh, you can catch me on the Live and Level podcast Thursday nights, 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, Shameless Pub. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I had a good time. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, for coming through, man. All right, Alex, go ahead and give your outro. Let the people know where they can find you. All right, what's going on, everyone? Active Sin here. Another week of Team Red Talks Nintendo, the best Nintendo podcast on the internet. And um, yeah, we had a lot of fun today. Thank you, Keith, for dropping by. Always good to see a new face and get some different opinions in here. Um, I'm going to be streaming, uh, what the hell is it called? Hellblade, Set- Sesunas, whatever. You almost had uh, Salmon Run. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm skipping out on Salmon Run. But uh, yeah, I'm going to play that after this. I heard that's a pretty good game. We'll test it out. Uh, PC version, of course, is that's the best platform. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, we will see you guys next week. All right, Coupon, why don't you go ahead and give your outro let the people know where they can find you. Hallelujah! Paragon's online again. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, Yeah, you can find me at uh, Twitch and Twitter, Coupon, all that good stuff. Facebook, Coupon Strives, YouTube, Coupon Strives. I'm trying to get Paragon and or Overwatch working because they both have events and things going on. So hopefully I'll be able to get that stuff uh, going and I'll be able to stream it and you guys can join me and watch me rage out because I suck at both of these games. But hey, that's the fun of it. That's why it's a struggle stream. Paragon seems to be working because I got it on my screen right now. So we're going to try Overwatch and maybe I'll stream tonight or maybe I'll do it tomorrow. But uh, just check out Twitter and Facebook for some information to see when I'm going live. You can catch me there. Awesome, awesome. So you guys know you can find me at Twitter at the video game her and YouTube at the video game her and Twitch at Nia Loves Ninty. Thank you guys so much for coming out to Team Red Talks Nintendo again. We do this every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can catch us again next week. To those of you guys who are curious about Mario Kart Mondays, we actually decided to do a Splatoon yesterday. So make sure you check us out on Mondays because we're trying to phase between Mario Kart and Splatoon. So um, we streamed on Alex's channel yesterday some Salmon Run. So make sure you guys are following him as well as me because you never know what we're going to be playing on Monday. So just come in and get in where you fit in because we're probably going to be playing some stuff. Um, Anyways, make sure you give this a thumbs up. Make sure you give this a share. To those of you guys who are watching this after it's live and it's archived, make sure you give this a like and a share. Thank you guys. Come again next week and we'll see you later. Peace out. Deuces. Oh my god, finally. <laughs>